Okay, friends, so this is the biggie. This is the one we've got to get because this is the one that takes the hyperbolic parallel postulate and, like, really does a ton with it. So, here's the idea. Again, we're working under the hyperbolic parallel postulate. And in the hyperbolic parallel postulate, I have a line and a point not on that line. I can drop a perpendicular. I also have parallels. Clearly, if I go double perpendicular, that's parallel. But there are also other parallels. This may be parallel. This may be parallel. Because th that line will just kind of hook around and around and around. But there are also lines that intersect L. Clearly, many of them. So the question is, when do you jump from the blues to the reds? At what point? There's got to be some angle opening up, opening up, opening up, opening up, where we turn from a blue line to a red line. And this lesson deals with that line that's just barely parallel. That's the thing. So... Undo, undo. Well, no, let's leave it in there. Why not? We'll go brand new page. Brand new. Brand, brand new page. We are going brand new page. Great. So we've got a line. We've got a point not on the line. We've got a perpendicular. The foot of the perpendicular shall be called A. Pick a point B on either side of PA, doesn't matter. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let K be the set of all R such that ray PDR intersect ray AB is not equal to the empty set. Now, this ray is the ray with degree measure up here, R. This is R degrees. So this would be the point DR. Now, for a whole bunch of values of R, there is going to be intersection with line L. And the crossbar theorem would give me this point down here. This is called the intersecting set for P and ray AB. A couple of things we should notice about this. K is a subset of 0 to 90. Clearly, if R is 90, there will not be an intersection between ray PDR and ray AB. It's just not going to work. Uh, clearly, K has to include 0, and it will include some numbers between 0 and 90. It should also be somewhat clear that K is of the form 0 to some number R0. There's got to be some point at which you get the first line that's not going to touch L. For that first line, it's angle measure, angle A, P, D, R, naught. That angle measure is R naught. That's the first, quote unquote, first line that does not cross L. Which seems like a bizarre thought to think about because you're thinking there are infinitely many points here. Each of these infinitely many points connects to point P. But no, we're in the hyperbolic plane. So no. And in fact, there is a theorem 
about the set K. If R is in the set K, so R is some number for which this ray is going to hit line L, then two things. One, S is in K for all S between 0 and R. In other words, if this ray hits line L at some point R, then for every value of, of an angle measure less than R, those rays will all hit line L. All of them. Two. There exists a T in K such that T is greater than R. Has to. Has to. So I find some point R, we know from the angle measure R, I just go to some other point on the other side of PR from B and connect the dots. So when I connect the dots, this ray must have an angle measure that's bigger than R, bigger than little r. If you're familiar with analysis, this is the idea of least upper bound. R naught is the least upper bound for K. So if you're familiar with analysis, that's the term. If you're not familiar with analysis, that'll be the term when you get there. So here's what we do. This angle R naught, this is called the angle of parallelism for P and AB. And the angle of parallelism is the same if you pick B on the right side of A or, or on the left side of, of A. It doesn't really matter. The angle of parallelism will be the same. This is the angle after which everything is parallel and before which nothing is parallel. Got a theorem for you. The angle of parallelism depends only on the distance from P to the line. The critical number that determines the angle of parallelism depends only on the distance between the point P and the line L. And so the way we show this I'll sketch it. You take two points that are the same distance from the line. There's A, there's A prime. Those are congruent. And you have your B on this side of PA, and you have your B prime on this side of P prime, A prime. And what we do is we show that the critical angle will be the same in this situation as in this situation. And the way we do that is we show that the intersecting sets are the same. That is to say, if a ray is drawn at a particular angle, at a particular angle R that intersects L for this case, then that same angle will produce intersection over here. I will sketch that out when we gather in class, but I think you can figure that out. I think you know that if this ray intersects, then this ray will have to intersect and vice versa. Okay, time for a definition. I'm going to define kappa of x. And kappa of x is the critical number for 
some point P and some line L where X is the distance from the point to the line. So X is the distance from the point to the line. Kappa depends on X. Uh, as before, Kappa of X is the measure of angle APD where angle APD is the angle of parallelism for P and some line AB. This function kappa, which goes from zero to infinity on the domain, remember X is the distance from a point to a line, so that distance could be anywhere from zero to infinity, uh, mapping into zero to 90 degrees, because 90 would be the largest possible angle at which parallels start existing, this function is called the critical function. It is called the critical function. So you got a line, drop a perpendicular. For this distance x, there is some kappa. For this distance y, there is some kappa. And that's the angle for which this ray is the first ray that doesn't touch that line. Here's the theorem. Kappa is non-increasing. That is, if A is less than B, kappa of A is greater than or equal to kappa of B. The non-increasing function. So what does that mean? That means I've got a line, take a perpendicular to that line just for convenience. I've got some distance A, some point P that is A away from L, there is an angle of parallelism. There's a ray PD at some angle kappa of A, such that ray PD is the first ray that doesn't touch L. If we come up some greater distance and we draw the angle of, we draw a ray in at its angle of parallelism, kappa of A is bigger than kappa of B. Just by going farther away from the line, we get a smaller angle of parallelism, or at least they're the same. At least they're the same. So the way we do this is we say, let's pretend not. So we let R be the angle of parallelism for P and AB. Actually, this is fairly straightforward. We say, let's pretend if this is the angle of parallelism, let's just bring that situation up here so that this angle is also kappa of A there can be a ray constructed such that this angle is congruent to this angle. Well, by corresponding angles, I know that QD prime is parallel to PD, so QD prime never intersects L, because Q and D prime are both on the same side of 
PD from L. So you're not going to have any intersection there. So if this ray doesn't intersect L, then kappa of B can't be greater than kappa of alpha, because if kappa of B were greater than kappa of A, then we could say, oh no, that's not the smallest angle for parallelism. This angle is the smallest for parallelism. In the Euclidean geometry, kappa of alpha is the same all the way. Kappa of alpha is 90 degrees. Kappa of A is 90 degrees for just about everything in Euclidean. But in non-Euclidean, in the hyperbolic plane, kappa of B is no bigger than kappa of A. Um, in hyperbolic geometry, every angle of parallelism is acute. And every critical number is less than 90. That's what makes the hyperbolic plane so weird to play with, because we're not used to that. And if you thought that was weird, the next few lessons are just going to make you crazy. So looking forward to that. Uh, we'll play around with parallels and asymptotic triangles and crazy things in future videos. For now, that's enough.